We're ready as soon as our are, illustrious are. mayor sits down. I'd like to call to order the joint. Right. No, I'm not calling to. Am I calling to order the joint or just the governing? How are we doing this? Um, you could do the joint one. Okay, I'm calling to order the joint governing board and implementation board agenda. Roll call, please. Council members, sorry, board members Herrera, Here. Schmidt, Here. Tate, Here. Wasserman, Here. Tucker, Here. Siebert, Here. Crabtree, Here. Lazat, Here. Fitzwater. Here. Um, Committee in here. Oh. Hi. <laughs> oh, Hi, Joe. <laughs> Thank you all for your courtesy in accommodating my remote participation. The other guy didn't ask Absolutely. me. He saw me didn't ask me. <laughs> so we are now on the part of the agenda that says report from the chairs. At this moment, I have no report. Um, how about you, Chair I, I Wasserman? I promise a better second half performance by the 49ers this week. <laughs> <laughs> for the Santa Clara County 49ers. The gave oh. us <laughs> okay. Report from Public Advisory Commission. Um, Walt Glines called me. Are you the assistant? No. No. Um, he called, uh, emailed, and said he was not able to attend. He had a conflict, so that will not be at this time. Public comments for items not on the agenda. I don't see any. Board regular business. Item number one is approval of the minutes of the June 19th regular meeting of the governing board. Motion to approve. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Submitting an aye. Thank you. Thank you. Can you Yes, he can go. Item number two, reporting the fiscal year 15 revenues and budget expenditures, reporting of fiscal year budget expenditures. <laughs> Thank you, Chairperson Tucker. Um, so I'll just go over the staff report and just real briefly and and then me, Mr. Sullivan. Yes. Supervising can you hear Mr. Sullivan all right? Supervisor Joe, can you hear Mr. Sullivan all right? I can. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, great. So, uh, this is just the review of the um, the revenues and expenditures to date for fiscal year 15 and uh, also to review the expenditures uh, for last uh, fiscal year 13-14. So the Santa Clara County Department of Finance generated a report that summarized in the, in the staff report uh, authored by Jill on the agency. And it deals with expenses up to September 11th of last week. Um, and the revenues to date are uh, $984,309. Expenditures that uh, that the county has invoiced and processed are 204,208. We have invoiced, uh, we've sent invoices to them that are slightly greater than that, an additional 31,703. The net income as of 9-11 is uh, $780,000 and 101, or $780,101, yeah. Uh, the beginning, the rollover balance for the last fiscal year was $226,276. The fund balance as of, uh, as stated above, uh, was $780,101,000. And the ending fund balance is $1,006,377. In addition, uh, project-specific nitrogen deposition impact fees associated with Apple's uh, new campus in Cupertino, Cupertino will be electronically deposited to the county by the end of this week, according to what they told us, and that amount is approximately uh, 130000 uh, in the future, looking forward, uh, the Habitat Agency expects to receive over $400,000 in Burling Owl funds from uh, City of Morgan Hill within the next month or two. Uh, by a talk with um, City of Gilroy planning staff, there's another large project in the queue and uh, over $1 million from just that project alone will be coming forward to the agency. 
and there's uh, also significant I don't know the exact amounts coming from the water district there's some burling owl fees and also uh, uh, project mitigation fees associated with the Anderson Dam project um, in addition Santa Clara County will be uh, I know they're currently processing applications and there's additional applications that will be processed over the next year I've been in contact with the city of uh, San Jose and there are several projects being uh, processed currently including one that uh, depending on what the build out is could result in Ken's projections of um, burling owl fees being spot on but it, it, it sort of depends on whether they develop the, the whole site or just um, you know half the site and um, that I think about sums it up for that and then there's also all the yeah, and I'm willing to answer any questions you have on both this year's budget to date and and last year's budget okay thank you do we have any questions thank you madam chair just a, um, a quick question Ed. on the page bottom of page 10 it said a very important area the habitat agency needs to continue to improve upon and that is ensuring that deposits received are defined and recorded accurately correct so Kurt, we we've been operating under a interim budget process so we're working with uh, Joe Arch CPA and they're going to be developing a more uh, robust uh, tracking and budgetary process for it so they'll be developing uh, I mean right right now we we know which funds are borrowing out funds which are nitrogen but we're going to have a very detailed uh, uh, sort of tracking system to keep keep track of where all those funds go and how those are spent the ones associated with uh, mitigation and and the mitigation fee act applies to and those that are more pertinent with CEQA uh, related like the ones that um, the city of Morgan Hill is uh, forwarding to us in the next month the Apple computer would be one that's related to CEQA so the tracking will be so you'll have burling owl funds that are sort of plan related burling owl funds that may come from non-participating cities or happen po uh, pre-plan and the same with nitrogen deposition you'll have um, funds that are um, you know like from Apple or we, we also got some monies from the uh, uh, Mountain View project thank you but yes but your comment there is simply to say we'll have more line items for income rather than grouping them all together similar to how we do with expenses I, exactly Thank exactly you. it's it's good yes exactly that madam chair I don't see any recommended action but would motion to approve review if that's the motion motion to approve review second the budget all in favor aye aye committee and I thank you on to item three governing board amendment of the habitat agency conflict of interest code to add disclosure by alternate members of the governing and implementation boards and to add language as recommended by the county of Santa Clara County Office of County Council report is there a report yes uh, oh, sorry. yes yeah <laughs> good afternoon board how are you um, so the conflict of interest code is required to be reviewed um, every two years on even years so we are due for that review um, the only changes we had suggested as Habitat agency staff was to add the alternates to the governing and implementation board members just for added clarity that those members um, are in fact required to complete their form 700s um, and then the County Council Office recommended some language additions and cleanups to have it conform with um, the state code and those are the only changes that are included in the resolution in your packet shows what we've suggested be removed the language that County Council has asked to be added um, and then we've just cleaned up some formatting okay, thank you any questions motion to approve staff's recommendation second Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Committee and I. Future governing board initiated agenda items. Does anybody have anything they would like to add at the next meeting? 
Seeing none, I'll move on to the Joint Governing and Implementation Board Action Item Number 4. Approve the minutes of the January 16th meeting. Do I have a motion? Or is there, did you want to say something? No. no. Oh, okay. you still look like you're starting <laughs> to say something. Do you have a uh, motion, please? Madam Chair, I'll move to, to approve uh, both four and five. Okay. Second. Okay. Madam Chair. Go ahead. I need to abstain on, on the, the January 20th. I wasn't here. Okay. Okay, I just wanted to make a correction that uh, Ann Callan of BTA actually attended the March 20th board meeting. Okay. okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Pass Committee it. and I. One abstention. With one abstention. Committee and I. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, item six. This is something that I put on just for discussion purposes. I'm not sure um, if, if we need to go there or not, but I just thought I'd bring up the fact um, on other uh, agency commissions where I'm uh, a member of, we actually have a finance subcommittee that works with the director and goes over issues. I don't know that we want to do that. I'm just bringing it up as an idea. Do you? I, so, what are your comments and thoughts? <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure if this would be necessarily a finance committee, but I, I've had some discussions about whether we need a personnel committee at some point. So I don't know, maybe we're so small at this point, maybe it's just one executive committee that can handle those issues. Just thinking off the cuff. An executive committee. I'm somewhat concerned that because we're so broad a and diverse a set of representatives that any committee less than the committee as a whole might not properly represent <laughs> that breadth. So uh, I, I would suggest not doing this until and unless it, it turns out that we have a tremendous need for it, and then we certainly can consider it even on an ad hoc basis. Oh. <coughs> Go ahead. Generally, I, I'd say yes. I, I think, though, that we probably should have an, uh, an evaluation and support for our staff. Classes. It might be easier to do that as a committee of the board. I don't think we need that now. Got, Ed's just got here. <laughs> so, uh, but we should, be, should provide him a way to support him and provide him feedback. Um, and I think it might be something we want to do at, at a committee level, but I, I don't think we need to take action at the, on that at this point. Okay, thank you. I just wanted to bring it forward as a discussion item. <coughs> Moving on to item number seven, report from the executive officer. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, some really good news. Uh, the Santa Clara Valley Habitat Plan, um, it was a grant written by OSA for $2 million has been um, approved by the state and the federal uh, Section 6 program. Yes. And it's uh, the grant will support the acquisition of over, over 1,800 acres in the Coyote uh, Ridge area, one of the properties up there. And so um, I'm cautiously optimistic that we'll be able to take advantage of that, those funds and some other agency funds to make that uh, purchase happen. Very good. Thank you. And some other good news. Uh, Caltrans has contacted us, and they want to donate a parcel in the southeast corner of the county. It's um, off of Highway 152. It's a 55.4-acre parcel along Pacheco Creek. It was an old mitigation site that they had, and they want to donate it to us and it would help with our connectivity and our linkages of the plan. It also fits in, seems like I, sorry. So it also fits into our um, um, overall reserve system that's uh, designated for that uh, area of the county. So that's great news too, yes. Then uh, the next item I wanted to update you on is the Gavilan College uh, Coyote Valley PSE. And um, the Habitat Agency evaluated uh, the Coyote Valley Campus Phase 1 project, um, proposed activity for participating uh, special entities under, under the plan. And uh, we, were, uh, we found that the, the project was unable to make the four of the six required PSE findings 
this is a um, concern that uh, the concern primarily is that future phases of the project they they envision this they came in for phase one but there's also three other phases that are associated with the project and we were concerned that it was going to infringe upon the co permittee wetland take our wetland cap for take is very small it's 15 acres this this project alone would deplete 12 percent of that take that would then be unavailable for the co permittees on projects that the that they would hopefully be that take would be available for co permittee projects um, there's also uh, the phasing and water's impacts of the pro proposed activity is also a concern for the U.S. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers and the Regional Water Quality Control Board. Pro, uh, the proposed activity has not yet received their water permits. The outcome of this permitting process may influence the final site design and the conditions required by the project. Um, because of this uncertainty and the future phasing impacts to seasonal wetlands, it is not appropriate for the Habitat Agency to consider this project at this time. Um, the Habitat Agency does not recommend coverage of the proposed activity and will not advance it for approval to the wildlife agencies or the Implementation Board. Okay. And I'm willing to take questions on this issue because I know it's a, it's an it may be an important project for some of the board members here. Thank you, Madam Chair, um, and uh, thank you, Director Sullivan. Um, two things one when you have a million dollars in your general fund a two million dollar grant is certainly tremendous news that's congratulations to all of us and great job that's that's very 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 exciting as far as the acquisition of lands and, and our mission of the HCA um, number two on the Gavlin College the project where you said four of the six phases couldn't recommend is this the project at the San Martin Airport or is this a project elsewhere this is the one in Coyote Valley, uh, yes. Thank you. Yes, sorry, if I didn't make that specific. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, did you see one? Oh, sorry. Okay. Any other questions of staff? Go ahead. Uh, and just to make sure there's no confusion, the Gavlin, as I understand it, has a separate project for their main campus. Where we're, I believe we have a PSC with that. And that, that is not a problem. That no, a no, that's not a problem. And I, I apologize for the confusion. That's a, That's been processed. They've already submitted their fees. I apologize for that. Yes, this is, yeah. Yeah, this is the Coyote Valley project. It's it's a new one. Nothing's been built. It's, uh, it's unfortunate, but it's just not a good fit for the PSC process, mainly because of that wetland take uh, constraint. Uh, and I'll just finish and I'm, I'm glad to see the other part of the Gavlan project moving forward. I think that particular one on Coyote Valley and Bailey had many, many problems. So I, I think it's probably appropriate that they not go forward at this point. And, and I will continue with my report. Some, uh, just uh, another issue that's very important for the co-permittees is um, what goes on in non-participating cities, especially uh, as related in nitrogen deposition and burrowing owl. Um, the agency wrote a comment letter on the city of Santa Clara city place projects. Uh, we strongly encouraged both wildlife agencies to submit letters. The California Fish and Wildlife submitted a letter under our encouragement. So we submitted it on their NOP, both uh, saying that the project would have um, significant impacts on burrowing owl uh, breeding and foraging habitat as well as nitrogen deposition and in, and needs to be addressed in their NOP and their CEQA document. That was a very important issue for the city of San Jose as well as the other co-permittees and, and just want to let you know that we're following through on that as, as did the state on that commitment. And uh, we're also working on um, uh, RFP contracting rules for the agency uh, just reviewed another draft today of it and we'll be bringing it to the implementing board uh, in November where we'll have rules for hiring contractors and doing procurement and RFP and all that and uh, also uh, to honor our past uh, director we uh, 
for the implementing board meeting in November. I'd like to do a resolution to honor his service to the agency and to this, you know, 40 years of service in Santa Clara County. It's pretty amazing. And uh, so we do a resolution and also thinking about what else the board may like to do. Uh, would you like us to prepare a plaque, do a clock? I'm open to ideas on this one. I think some South County wines would be appropriate. <laughs> a case of wine. We can get some wine. Yeah. And he'll be here to present something then? Yes, yes, yes. Ken, Ken will be here. Yep. He isn't living. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. We'll, we'll have his, uh, a party in his absence. <laughs> and, and being half Irish, I, I know all about that. <laughs> um, thank you. Oh, is that it? Any other questions of staff? Okay, so at this time, I will adjourn the governing board um, meeting. And thank you very much, Member Smidian, uh, for attending via audio. It's been a pleasure to be with you all. Thank you very much. I don't believe the Governing Board will meet again until January, so um, enjoy your holidays to the Governing Board members. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Okay. Bye. Bye. Now I turn it over to Chair Watson. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Tucker. I appreciate that. So we're on item 8, which is approval of the minutes from the July 17th meeting. And where's David Douglas Muirhead? Dave, do you wish to speak, speak on any of these items? Okay. No? Okay, good. Anybody else from the public wish to speak, address? So we just don't go each item by item? Okay, item eight, uh, motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Thank you. Second. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none. Second? All in favor? I'm sorry. Uh, Member Fitzwater. Thank you. I'm just yes. abstaining, abstaining on that one. Okay. And again, for anybody, and, and Valerie, please correct me if, if I'm mistaken. Um, what I've been told over the last couple of years, anybody who wishes to that has reviewed the min minutes, even though they weren't present, can, in fact, approve them if they so wish. That is correct. The abstention is fine. The only time it ever causes a problem is if it leaves us with less than a quorum in which to approve, and then, then it's an issue. So we have the abstention from uh, Member Crabtree. Motion made and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Passes unanimously. Item 9, establishment of the TAC, the Technical Advisory Committee. The recommended action is a resolution establishing the TAC and appointment of TAC committee members. And um, I think our Director Sullivan making that report. Yes, I am. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Wasserman. So this is to adopt a resolution establishing the TAC and appointment of TAC Advisory Committee members. Uh, currently, um, there is not a TAC. There's sort of a de facto TAC, which is the Wildlife Agency Co-Permittee Meeting, which takes place uh, currently the fourth uh, Thursday every month. So this would sort of formalize that group and, and uh, sort of convert them officially into the TAC. Uh, the TAC is a plan requirement. It's, uh, it's a non-Brown Act uh, meeting group. Uh, but it's still a, a requirement of the plan, and it's the one chance we get to meet with the wildlife agencies and discuss plan implementation. So this is sort of to take what is informal and, and make it formal. And there's a list of names that uh, are on, the I think, the third page of the staff report. And it was we tried to make it as comprehensive as possible. <laughs> and those are folks that have at one time or another attended the DAC meeting. And, um, and then after this point, any additions to the TAC would be appointed by the implementing board. Thank you. It's always good to have a committee with 30 people on it to uh, <laughs> help make things flow smoothly. Member Lazat. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, that was going to be one of my comments, the size of it and how unwieldy that could be. So it's, it's non-Brown Act, so it doesn't matter whether there's a quorum. Before people show up, they can do business? Yes. Okay. Uh, my, I have two questions, and I'm sitting right next to one of my questions, uh, and, and, uh, and neither, neither one of them are derogatory or they're just a, a curiosity. Uh, first one I will uh, mention is um, there are 12 members from the County of Santa Clara. Can never have enough. And so <laughs> I, I just, um, I don't know what the voting is or, or, or whether they're, 
Why, why are there 12 members? Uh, there's usually just one that shows up, Rob Eastwood. But in the past, there's been other, me uh, if there's a GIS question or a geo browser question, or Kim Rook sometimes goes in Rob's place. And that's people from that agency that have showed up at these meetings before. So if they do, usually there's about 10 to 15 people that show up. It's, it's never, it, it, at least since I've been here, it hasn't been 30. But it just allows for the flexibility of uh, sort of alternates or issue issue specific individuals, and and the issues could mean they go to several meetings over several months, or it could be just a one time um, occurrence. But it also uh, with turnover retirements, it it allows for uh, an easier flow if if somebody leaves the county or leaves uh, one of the other jurisdictions, then. Uh, there's someone else there that's already sort of recognized formally as a as as part of the TAC, but the TAC itself is a is a core of about ten people. Okay. And, and Rob's usually the county person. Okay. I'll let you ask your question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was just going to make note that I'm listed as a TAC member as well as a board member, and it's not a voting group. The TAC is really more of a, a, a you know, group that comes together for discussion purposes and. Mm -hmm. and so I, I'm not aware of any issue, but just want to have, confirm that there's no conflict with being on both board. No, groups. none at all. None at all. Yes. And, the, and then the second thing I would just point out, number eight, Michael Bills, I believe, is no longer with the city of San Jose. So thank you. I, uh, I was given this list by ICF, and I wasn't sure who even is still around. So that's good to know. Thank you. And Councilor Armento, the. Um, members of this agency, do they have any Form 700 disclosure requirements or not on attack? No. Um, many of the people will be disclosing through their entities that they work for and the, under the various capacities that they might be there. Um, but this entity is really just a nuts and bolts working group of people. So the plan calls for an official establishment of a technical advisory committee. Uh, even if the plan didn't call for an official establishment of the technical advisory committee, these people would probably be getting together to hash out all this stuff. But there are no um, operational requirements such as what the implementation board or the governing board has. Thank you for that. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to double check. So if an, uh, a member has a question of the TAC, do you would prefer us to go through you or could we contact uh, the TAC directly or how would we do that? I, I'm comfortable with you contacting, you know, like say Stan or Valerie for the seat. Questions yes. I have in the, in the Ab area of Gilroy that I'm mm -hmm. wondering about whether they I'm, require a permit or not. I'm, I'm perfectly comfortable and thank you for asking. Yeah. Okay. Member Siebert. Um, I, I think I share, I'm not sure if it's the concern, but certainly the question as to the number. Um, my experience is that a committee of this size is less than efficient. Um, so I'm wondering if there ought to be some guidance from this board as to the maximum number of people from any one agency. Uh, I mean, the cost to the county of Santa Clara as a taxpayer seems huge. If, if you well, know, uh, again, it sounds like only one person. Again, there's only up. no. Yeah, this this list and it expands. Upon, this was a time before you arrived here. Correct. Th this is a list of all the people that ever showed up at all those meetings that we held, the water district and everywhere else that met and got together. And it's a complete list. And some of them aren't aren't even any longer with the organization that they're listed. So I, I appreciate what you're saying. Our executive director is saying up to 12 people normally show up. Correct. Okay. Yes. So uh, I could make this suggestion. Um, if the uh, board prefers or the, um, the idea would be to have certain general categories, if you want to identify certain general categories of people that you think should be in the TAC, we can then go back because I know another board member was concerned about the actual appointing and listing of the people. We can pare this list down, eliminate the person who's no longer working for the entity, and, and really focus on the main people that come because there is a provision that says additional people can be brought in as expertise is needed on select items, and you only really need to have core people that are considered to be official members.
if, if that helps anyone who's concerned about the volume of, of names. I was actually going to suggest that perhaps there be a number, and, and certainly people can have alternates. You know, we have, Doug comes to more, goes to more meetings, I think, than <laughs> I do. But, uh, you know, people that can attend. But, you know, I'm concerned that the sort of everybody's responsible, then nobody's responsible syndrome can occur. Um, so well, I, I certainly can appreciate sure. uh, your comment, Mr. Wasserman, but I'm, you know, I, that's, a, I, I guess, a suggestion for discussion is perhaps limiting the number or, you know, designating uh, which agencies, I think, as, as council suggesting, you know, a representative, perhaps two from the city, for example, and then they can, they can bring other people as experts or certainly as alternates as they choose. Yes. Well, I also think it's a good idea to have categories rather than individuals just turnover and flexibility. And I, I can just perhaps as a little bit of insight, you know, there's three people listed from the city of Morgan Hill. Only one of us would ever attend the meeting. And really, the three names probably came from, you know, who's on the email distribution list and gets the agendas. And if, if our regular person isn't able to attend, then we have two who are available and informed so they can fill in. Any other? Yes, Member Lazat, thank you. The lawyer in me wants to see consistency. The resolution speaks to establishing a public advisory committee, but internally it talks about the TAC. Do we need to change the uh, resolution heading to establishing a technical advisory committee? That'll be corrected. I, I, there are a number of corrections that need to be made, and I will do that as soon as the meeting concludes. Thank you. Thank you. It's, yeah, technical working group is what it is. Yes. Another lawyer speaking. Mm -hmm. um, one, one relatively minor thing on the resolution, the whereas page, page one or page 57, uh, refers to the draft environmental impact report. I think, should we make that the final EIR? For, that's in the first whereas, and the second to last whereas, and the final whereas. So it should be FEIR and FEIS. And then the other issue that uh, council had mentioned earlier was that I didn't see the resolution specifically appointing those people that are listed um, earlier in the staff report. So uh, I was trying to work on the fly on some language, making sure we, we have this committee constituted by, by our action today. Um, so, and, and I guess at this point, based upon the discussion, what I'd really like to get some clarification on is do you want, does the group want to have people identified by entity and position, or do you want to actually enumerate people? I, I think from, from what I've heard, if I forth. may, I mean, I can understand the concern that's been expressed here. And, and uh, Mr. Sullivan, if you perhaps can talk with these people next time, for instance, um, on items 12, thir individuals 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it looks like at one time or another over the last couple, three years, six different members from our Parks Department have showed up at a meeting. Um, my guess is now one person goes. If, if that. One, <laughs> one, one to two. One yes. person, two yeah. goes. So per, a suggestion I would throw out for, for everyone here, attorneys and not attorneys, um, is that it says simply County of Santa Clara Parks Department up to two. And something like that, is that more? And so there's a couple, you know, County of Santa Clara Planning Department up to two. Um, so, so this item is not time sensitive, so okay. why don't we revamp it and come back at your I'm next right meeting? Right Sure. That would be great. Good idea. Okay. So anyway, if you can look in that, come back with some ideas. That'll make the list look smaller, and it won't prohibit somebody who's subbing for somebody who's on vacation or, or whatever. I'm just proud to see so many passionate County of Santa Clara employees wanting to show up here and be there. And who may live in South County and so, want to get home early. That, <laughs> that, that, that could be it, you know? Okay. So this particular item is... Adopt a resolution establishing. So I'll make a motion to um, send it back to staff. Do we need to make a motion for that? I think so. Okay, motion it. made. Second. Seconded. Excuse me, I couldn't hear what the motion was. What was the motion? To send, send it, back it back to staff. staff. Okay. And second by member Herrera. Any discussion? None. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes unanimously. All right. And we go on to number 10, discussing the appointment of an agricultural representative to the public, to our PAC, to replace Jennifer Shearer. Yes, and I Mr. just... Mr. Sullivan. Yes, I just uh, wanted to open it up to 
the board and get some feedback. I met with Liz Gabrero, uh, Jennifer's replacement, and she expressed interest. She did? Yes, she did. I was wondering about that. Okay, good. Yes. So if there's any other candidates that board members may want to field, then I would approach those those individuals. I'll start that conversation. I, I think if you have the executive director of the Farm Bureau that represents the farmers, the ag industry, et cetera, uh, volunteering to serve in this position, I would grab that volunteer who, although she's very new, she comes from a family of farmers and ag people. Uh, she's a recent graduate. What, what university, do you recall? No. Okay, a, a recent graduate um, in, in the ag industry, long time person, South County person, and um, she's the executive director of the Farm Bureau. So she has a board of 12 to 15 people, depending on who shows up, that tell her how they would like to be represented from a majority perspective. And I think that's a good um, person to fill this spot until we have an issue. Do you have any other volunteers to your knowledge? None yet. I, I talked to the PAC at the last PAC meeting and said if they had any ideas, but I have not heard from the PAC concerning this. Uh, but you were probably only able to speak to, say, 12 of the PAC members, not the other 18. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Anybody else, any other suggestions you want to see? Or otherwise, I'll, I'll make the motion to, uh, to ask Liz to appoint to that position. <coughs> Second. Thank you. And we'll officially bring it back to the board uh, next meeting and <coughs> to formalize the appointment. Wonderful. Thank you. Any further discussion? None. Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. Thank you. And that moves us on to number 11. Um, your report on the early payment of mitigation fee policies. Yeah, and just real briefly, this was a co-permittee request and the agency was responsive to it. And so we would set up uh, an early payment uh, process for uh, project proponents. So if uh, they want to pay the fees, let's say in April and their project isn't um, going to get, uh, well, I'll be a little more current. Let's say they're going to pay their fees in September and their project isn't going to get built until um, 2016. Uh, they would get locked in of this year's rates and they wouldn't have to worry about <coughs> fee increases in, in the future. There's no refund associated with this, but they, they yes. That's the catch. Yes. <laughs> So that's, it's a bit of a risk, but if they want to lock in, um, we're, we're allowing them that opportunity. Currently they're allowed to pay um, just prior to or up, up, up to the discretionary action, usually a, a grading permit or a building permit. So, so this was just to let you know that we did uh, create a policy to reflect that request from uh, co-permittees. That, that's another option available. Nothing's mandatory either way. Any comments? Yes. I have a question. Is there um, any limitation on this so that um, a developer who may be planning a project over 20 years, could they pay today and at today's rate and no matter what the increase is over the 20 years, that fee would be kept? I think it's per whatever the local jurisdiction's policies are on that. Uh, I, I know there's usually a time limit on uh, the permit process at the local government level, one to two years, uh, you have your, your, and Andrew can address this probably better than I can, but it's, um, it's, there, you know, it's not usually such a long period of time. Andrew. That's generally true, but. Thank you. That's generally true, but there are, you know, mechanisms like development agreements and things like that, that conceivably that could happen that a, a development is, sort of prepaid, if you will. But my, my understanding is that if the, the fee escalates to reflect rising land costs. So if, if the agency had the money today at today's rate, you would be able to go ahead and, and acquire the land or, or do whatever it is that, to implement the plan. Um, so it's, it wouldn't really be a concern. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Good point. Member Schmidt. Yeah, I had a board member Siebert's concern as well. Um, I'm not sure I, I might be a little confused about uh, uh, Andrew, your, your response. So um, I guess the concern is if they're, they're going to lock in their 20 years of payments now, 
is it really going to cover the costs in the future? The idea that I thought was be over time we can reexamine our rates and figure out if we're going to if they cover what we need to cover for mitigation. But I, and, and I guess if I may, on the other hand, if they paid us the money up front now, we'd have the money to acquire land now at today's prices. Is that the point? That's the point. Present value. So, yeah. so not really locking the rate so much as paying the full amount, right? Today. Correct. Correct. Yeah. The money to do something. Yes. So I guess we, we get the advantage of that is we get the mitigation now in advance. Mm -hmm. So we can double check with the member agencies on how they deal with the payment of fees in light of the one example, the development agreements that was mentioned by board member Crabtree. And if necessary, Ed can amend the policy to address a cutoff point. Um, but as generally the case, um, most people or most entities don't allow payments um, that would, you know, have a 20 year horizon. So, and we do get the benefit of having the money up front, but we can, we can tweak the, the policy. Yes. And um, this was blessed by the co-permittees uh, and we had it reviewed by them twice. Rob Eastwood from the county sent it out to a broad group of planners and then the co-permittee group itself, we debated it and this is the language we finally arrived on, but we can definitely put in that caveat. And I think the point raised is, is a valid one, and I think that should be motivation for us if someone does prepay, that we put that money to work, mm -hmm. you know, today's dollars at today's dollars and go buy the land. Because what would come back to bite us in the tush is if somebody paid us for 20 years, we held on to it for 10, and went to go buy the mitigation, and we found out it's only half enough to do so. So I, I think it is important that we do that. Further comments? Yes. Um, I'm, I'm familiar with the concept where once a development comes in and a preliminary fee estimate is done, that developers often look and they say, oh, your fees are going up July 1st, January 1st, whatever, and they pay in advance. But So what, what was the, of concern to me here was the idea that someone say, I, you know, they know they're going to do X over the next 20 years, whether it be Gavilan College, which I'd love to give a break to, or you know, lend our, you know, lend our homes or somebody. And so they give us, here's a million dollars, I'm done. And exactly as uh, the Chair Wasserman said, it turns out that by the time we, you know, take action, identify it, it's going to cost us $3 million to do the mitigation. Yet we've calculated our budget over the, you know, 30 or 40 year life and we'd end up short. So uh, if, if it was, you know, and I think the agency council had a good suggestion, let's look into our member agencies. Maybe there's some limitation that it has to be tied to some project uh, possibly yeah, or tied to years. some period of time. Thank you. Andrew, Member well, Crabtree. Well, I, I think if we're actually able to go out and, and spend the money and, and acquire the land, we're better off doing the mitigation sooner than later. Agreed. So, so just want to make sure that, you know, I think it's actually could be in our favor to have this and just we have to be diligent about making sure we do spend the money and not put it aside. Buy land. They don't make it anymore. That's right. Better buy it today than in 20 years. That money. There you go. Good. Anything else on this item? Okay, and did you have any more in your report? No, that's it. Okay, yes. Member Tucker. We don't have a Here committee you know. comment section. No, we can make a comment for more microphones, but <laughs> Mayor Tate's gone. So. Actually, what I um, was wondering, since we just talked about a 20-year plan or something, what is in our plan, or maybe we could revi uh, revisit to refresh my memory and others, now that you have, for example, a million dollars, and you'll be getting a couple million more. What is the work plan that tells you you're going to out to seek buy uh, and and purchase the land, or what your work plan will be in the next 12 months to mm -hmm. to utilize that money and do it now? Yes, there's a there's a couple properties that are uh, OSA is currently in negotiations with um, the UTC, United Technology Company, oh, okay. and. Um, we can arrange a closed session to have OSA come and meet with the board and discuss uh, you know, our contributions and our um, our involvement in that. I've met with the Sergeant Ranch um, owners. Um, there's there's been some preliminary talks with some other owners that unfortunately haven't 
um, come to fruition. But the, uh, long term, as we get more money, we'll, we'll be uh, shaking the bushes and, and looking for willing landowners. Yeah. It's also not bad to have cash when the next recession hits either. Yes. Uh, it, it, no, I know. That's how East Contra Costa <laughs> I, took full advantage of, they got I, a lot of Section 6 grants. Ab, absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, we're all old enough to, something's coming sooner than later, and mm. cash is not a bad position to have when you want to buy land. Yep. When you want to sell, it's a different story. But that we're not in the selling business. Any other comments? No. Anything else? Uh, no chairperson. Thank you very much. That concludes item number 11. Um, it says next future implementation board initiate. I read that. I read it a couple of times and all I do is interpret that to ask any board members. Is there anything you want to agendize for a future meeting? Uh, now would be the time. Member Schmidt. I was wondering if we should have a standing item for the regional general permit just to find out what's going on with the, the core. To a placeholder? Idea. Yeah, just a let's, placeholder. I, That's let's, a good idea. Okay, we're not voting on that officially right now at this mm -hmm. moment, but is that all right to say? Or is that it's, okay? it's okay just to give us direction. You don't have to vote on it at all. I'd like to, we'd like another tab in the binder for that, please. <laughs> Thank sure. you. Sure. Would you like an, an update on what, what I know to, to date? Um, is that permissible now under this general area? Thank you. Yeah. So we had requested that Kay Goody reach out to the Corps, uh, the San Francisco office. She met with Jane Hicks. She expressed that this was a priority for Fish and Wildlife Service. It was a priority for Santa Clara Valley. And Jane was very responsive. Um, I called Lisa Mangione um, yesterday. She's on vacation. Um, she's the lead. She took over for Ian Densman. So I, I'm cautiously optimistic that we can get things back on track. And Kay went to bat for us on this. and. Hopefully, sometime early next year, we'll, we'll have a RGP permit that we can start using. Super. Please express our thanks for, for her going to bat for us and her, her efforts. Please do that. I will. Absolutely. Any other comments to make regarding this issue? Thank you. This is all, this is all happening. This is, this is working. This is good. Um, that's adjourning this meeting until November 20th, where we'll meet again here at, uh, at 3 o'clock. City of Morgan, right in these same chambers, I assume. There's not, yeah, council chambers. There we go. Wonderful. Meeting adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. You Under too. An hour. <laughs>